everybody. This is Julie Jordan Scott, and this scope is a Pass the Cast with Perry Girls. It is about mental health. So I'd like to welcome you to the replay and invite you all in. We've been listening to a group of incredible women talk about mental health in their own lives and the lives of those you've loved. If you're not familiar with Perry Girls, Perry Girls is, <laughs> is a women's group on Periscope and on um, and on Facebook. We are the largest Periscope group for women on Facebook. You can follow them at Perry Girls or perrygirls.com. And all these women who are whose names are coming up here are remarkable, and I suggest you follow them. So as I was watching the women on the uh, broadcast before me, I was just like, oh, do I really have to go? Because I just know I'm going to start crying. So I am a crier. I'm sorry, Evie. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so I just want to tell you some stories from my life. Um, you've heard a lot of facts and figures from people, and so I just want to tell you um, some of the stuff that, that is it is good, some of the things that might surprise you. So oftentimes people meet me and they say, wait, you have depression? You sure don't seem like a depressed person. You're smiling all the time. You're always happy. You're always cheerful. You have depression? Do you know what this is? And when I get bad with my depression, you don't see this. This goes away. This goes into a back room. This goes someplace where no one can see it. So, um, oftentimes, I think my biggest call is to let people know who have depression that they are not alone. And that if you have a friend or a loved one who has depression, one of the greatest gifts you can give is continuing to reach out to that person. Even though there are times with the depressed person where I won't answer my phone, I won't return my text messages, I don't go out. Um, Heather talked about going to the parking lot and not getting out. I cannot tell you. I've gone to parties and I've gotten to the party and I sat in my car and I haven't gone into the party because I didn't have enough energy to go inside and put on the smile and the mask that I believe is required of me. Hi, Beverly. I'm like, those people won't like me. Those people won't like me if they see that I'm not smiling and happy. And you know, it's like people say all the time, smile, smile. I'm like, no, be authentic. Be who you really are. And some of, sometimes, some of us are not ecstatically happy. And so here's the rub. I'm a creative person. Oh, that is so good. Did you see what Carla said? She has an accountability support person. And yes, we are people pleasers to me. You're right. Okay, I lost my train of thought. Three minutes in. Thank you, Evie. Um, by the way, at Perry Girls is Evie Toddy. She's amazing. She's at Web Evie. Love her dearly. She has quite a story, too. Um, maybe sometime she'll share. But um, So I want to tell you this. My, part of my story is that um, I used to, So I actually worked with... I'm glad you like potato chips. Um, <laughs> I actually worked with people with severe mental illness. And severe mental illness. They, the reason they were severe is they were considered um, gravely disabled, which meant they couldn't take care of their needs. And I came in like a public guardian. Um, I basically made choices for them um, regarding where they lived and the medication they took and all that. And um, while I was there, two of my clients with severe mental illness who had like schizoaffective disorder, which is bipolar and um, you have, oh my goodness, I should find that, Evie. But this gentleman um, had bipolar and schizophrenia together, and he threatened my life. And two months before that, another client threatened my life. In very vivid, very specific ways, they threatened my life. And they were capable, and they were close, and I took a leave of absence for my job. But what they don't tell you when you take a leave of absence for your job is that they will investigate you, and they will try to prove that you were crazy before that, that you had something quote unquote wrong with you uh, before you took your leave of absence. So I left my job to take care of my mental health at the mental health department. And then they, 
it had a, an investigator come to my house with huge files from interviewing my coworkers. Seriously? Um, it was awful. But here's where the good stuff comes. It was on an end of September day in Santa Monica, California, where I went to see the psychiatrist who the county hires to say they are covering their you-know-whats. <laughs> but the psychiatrist who was hired to prove that I was crazy before my clients threatened me believed my story, because my story is absolutely true. I love my clients with mental illness. I love them. I love them dearly. It was the administration that made me crazy. Yes, they threatened me, but then the no support, the, the, the follow-up, I probably could have gone back to work and been totally fine if it wasn't for that situation. Uh, Megan R. Pickens is after me. She's going to throw up some emojis. She's going to tell her story and talk about mental health after, after the scope. So I went and I stood on the cliff overlooking the Pacific Ocean, and when I looked at the Pacific Ocean, I said to myself, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. I know. I know who I am, and I know that no matter what they say about me, I know who I am. And I never went back to work for the county, and I became a life coach, and I pursued writing full time, and here I am today, changing lives every day, every day. Like Carla called me a healer, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I do. You know, heal through creativity, through writing through talking, through sharing, through helping people find their voice. There's Megan with the dancers. Um, and so, yes, I still have setbacks. I still have bad days. I, I still have anxiety issues. Um, I still don't show up for parties if I, if I can't put the mask on. But it's not an everyday thing. Um, I have learned how to take good care of myself. I have learned to use different techniques and different... Um, methods to help myself to feel better when I'm feeling low and um, I am just so grateful for people who are understanding and compassionate and um, who don't stigmatize who don't say well you have depression or oh you had PTSD or oh those people called you crazy I mean I have a daughter with bipolar and nothing hurts me more than to hear what she had to go through um, because of her diagnosis and her mental illness and um, she is so incredibly strong. And guess what? Megan is live. Would you please? <laughs> you found out you love writing poetry. That is so cool. Okay, so um, please follow me if you don't already. And then go see Megan, okay? I'm so glad there's no judgment. Thank you, Gia. I love all of you. I'm going to go see Megan. Um, thanks for being here. And I, I look forward to getting to know all of you better. I love you all too. Bye for now.